Good morning guys and welcome to today's video. A few weeks back I posted a video about all the different tools that I use out here on the ranch and a lot of you guys asked me how to use one of these wire splicers. That's what we're talking about today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. I'm about to get buzzed right now. Now I used to just cringe when I would see a broken wire like this. Before I had this tool, what I would have to do is like extend this one, wrap it around that post, and then just wrap this one. And yeah, it worked, but it wasn't nearly as good. The wire would never be as tight as it originally was. So there was a time when I would even try to use little turnbuckles to splice those wires back together. And that did work. But the biggest problem with that is it was really expensive because those turnbuckles were like six or seven bucks a piece. So Every time a wire breaks, you don't want to have to spend that kind of money to fix it or else, I mean, you'd go broke doing it that way. So that's what I really find so great about these is your repair is essentially free. It's just the cost of about a 12 inch piece of wire and it'll get this wire tight, probably tighter than it was before. The first thing that we want to do here is cut about, I don't know, a foot and a half, let's say 18 to 20 inches off of the spool of wire. But to be perfectly honest, before you even do that, you want to not be an idiot and you want to remember to bring your gloves when you're going to make a video about using barbed wire. All right, so that's looking more like 20 inches to me, but uh, for, for the way this thing works, it's better to have this too long than too short. So we're going to go with 20 inches. Now for this next part, there's probably not really a wrong way to do it, but we basically just need to tie this new piece that we cut into one side of the broken wire. So what I like to do is just come back here about uh, five or six inches and bend a 90. And then I'll do the same thing on this wire about there. So now I've got my two bends. I just hook these together and then wrap these wires up. Now that I've got my extension attached onto the old wire, I can go ahead and take the stretcher or the splicer. You know, I really never know what to call this thing. Um, anyway, unimportant. So we're gonna clip the old wire on that side, and then we're gonna clip the new wire on this side. With both ends of the wire hooked up to the stretcher, it's just as easy as just hitting this ratchet and bringing them together. With this wire as tight as we want it, we can now tie these back together, but it's worth saying that you want to get this thing plenty tight because when you take the stretcher off of the wire, it will spring back a little bit. So if you think you've got it just as tight as you want it, give it one more click and then when you take the thing off, it'll be perfect. When I'm making this last splice in the middle, I kind of do what I did on the first one in that I'll go in here about five or six inches, bend that up on a 90, and then I'll do the same thing, uh, well, kind of the same thing. Really, rather than do the five or six inches, you want your bends to kind of line up with each other. So that will probably be about there. And that is just about perfect. 
I wanted to give you a better look at how these two bends line up because this will be really important for how tight your splice is. So basically after you make, I guess I went a little beyond 90, but after you make your two bends on the wire, you, base, you want them to just butt up to each other or just kind of barely, if you see how they just overlap, that's gonna be perfect. Now that we have these two bends in basically the right spot, we can go ahead and hook these wires together like so. So I like to grab the bend so that it doesn't twist on me when I'm wrapping the tails. And that seems to work good, especially when you don't have gloves on and you have to be really careful not to cut yourself. Just do the same thing over here. Grab the bend and wrap the tail. All right. So that is just about done. Before you do this next step, make sure that you've got a good splice that's not gonna pop loose because if this splice isn't something that you can trust, you might be getting barbed wire exploding in your face and you don't want that. I'm feeling good about this one because I've got two solid wraps here and three good wraps there. So there's no way that that's gonna pop loose. I, I, I'm, I'm ready, this one's good. To release the stretcher off of the wire, what we're gonna do is on these little tabs here, we're gonna knock them back and then that'll release the, uh, the grip on the wire. So when you do this first one, it's gonna kinda pop, you know, because you're taking that, or you're applying the tension to your splice. Now that's why I was saying before that you really wanna make sure that you can trust this because if you pop this loose and this isn't good, this wire is gonna fly back and it could swing right out and hit your face. So I feel pretty good about that one. So I think we can go ahead and take this off. <laughs> so of course, when I'm filming, that, that one wasn't bad at all, which, which is a good thing, you know. All right, so we got both of these released. We can take this off of the wire. And now you can see this is the tightest wire on this fence now. I'm going to figure out the proper name for one of these and that's the name that I'm going to use in the title so that way if you guys are looking for one then you'll know what to call it. But if your place has barbed wire I really recommend getting one of these. This is probably my favorite fencing tool. This is a little off topic and kind of random but <laughs> my chocolate lab about the whole time I've been filming this video she got into this little field and she's been trying to figure out how to get out of there and she just can't figure it out. Poor Brownie. Good thing you're cute, huh? Yeah, you are cute. Brownie! Did you think about trying here? This is probably where you got in. There, you got it. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> So one more thing before we go, the channel has been growing a lot recently, which is so awesome. And we're starting to get close to maybe hitting 10,000 subscribers. And to be honest with you guys, 10,000 is a milestone that I really didn't think that I would ever get to. That's to me, that's, that's really amazing. And I, I appreciate all the support you guys have given me. So when we hit 10,000 subscribers, what I wanna do is have a live stream so I can talk with you guys and I think that will be really cool and that'll be a good way to celebrate. So when we hit 10,000, look for that live stream. And I am purposely announcing this at the end of the video because I know that only the loyal viewers watch the videos all the way to the end. So you guys will be the only ones that know about the live stream. I'm not gonna advertise it anywhere else. I wanna give the people that really support the channel, I want you guys to have a good live stream. So that's the way that I'm doing it. Thanks for hanging out in the field with me today, guys. I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. <laughs>